Married for 37 years, Ken and Lisa minister in the USA, Brazil, Russia, Israel, and are called to save the nations. Lisa, born from the Gentile nations into a family of pastors, and Ken, a New Yorker born from Jewish parents. At his bar mitzvah, those who heard Ken speak say he is destined to be a rabbi. Together, they teach how to practically walk in the Hebrew Christian roots of the faith and the revelation of Torah with the prophetic revelation and the power of the Spirit. It's time to hit the mark. So um, I'm going to talk a little bit from that Torah portion. And when you read from the Torah portion, you're joining thousands of people all over the world that are reading the same thing. So there's a power of agreement going on, right, all over the world. So God gave me this, a delay does not mean no. And he brought me to the children of Israel, and we talked about this, who the 12 spies, 10 of them went in, 12 of them went in, 10 of them came out with a negative report, two came out with a positive report. And the two that came out were Joshua and Caleb. And when they, the 10 got the entire group of Israel riled up against God. I want you to think about this. Against God's word, they were saying it will not work. When the whole reason they left Egypt, right, was to go to the promised land. Then what in the world are y'all doing? I mean, I'm like, why are you even out of here if you don't believe it, right? But he got the, they got everybody riled up and they were speaking negative. And so God had to chastise them, okay? And he, what he said to them was, everyone who's 20 years old, and older will not go into the promised land. And the Caleb had a different spirit. Caleb, he tried to warn them. And you know, I want you to understand. Remember, this is the year of the pay. What comes out of our mouth matters. So the people were speaking negatively. <laughs> and God, even in our own life, when we speak negatively, he has, we have the Holy Spirit that will quicken us. And if we'll just listen to the voice of the Holy Spirit. And Caleb, in Numbers 13, Caleb interrupted the crowd. And he said, be silent before Moses. And he said, let's go up and take the land now. We can do it. Caleb believed that they could do it. The rest didn't believe, but he believed. But look, God, look what God says about the one who has faith. Let me tell you something. The days that you live in, there's going to be a lot of negativity going on. And they're going to be speaking a lot of things. you got to determine, am I going to go with the crowd? Or I'm going to jump on your sermon. Or am I going to follow the cloud? Okay? <laughs> All right? you got to determine. Numbers 14. This is what God said about Caleb because he did not allow... Um, the people to influence him. He, he walked in faith and he said, but my servant Caleb, he has a different story. He has a different spirit. He follows me passionately and I'll bring him into the land he scouted out and his children will inherit it. He promised Caleb, you and your children shall inherit the land that you walked on, right? Remember I told you, delay does not mean no. So then 45 years goes by. Caleb still kept the faith. Amen. Joshua goes in. The, the, he sends out two. He sends in two spies, and they come back with a good report. And they go into the promised land. And Caleb goes to Joshua, and he says, "I was forty years old when Moses, the servant of Adonai, sent me to spy out the land, and I brought him back a word as it was in my heart. Nevertheless, my fellows that went out with me." made the heart of the people melt with fear. But I fully followed Adonai, my God. So Moses swore on that day saying, surely the land on which your foot has trodden will be an inheritance to you and to your children forever because you have fully followed Adonai, my God. So this is what he says to Joshua. So now behold, Adonai has kept me alive just as he said these 45 years 
since the time that Adonai spoke the word to Moses while Israel was journeying in the wilderness. And now behold, I am 85 years old and I am still as strong today as I was in the day that Moses sent me. As my strength was then, so my strength is now. Can I hear an amen, Cherry? Amen. All right. For, for war and for going out and for coming in. Now, therefore, give me this hill, or give me my mountain country, about which Adonai spoke on that day. For you heard on that day how the Anakins were there, and they were great, and there was fortified cities. Perhaps Adonai will be with me, and I will drive them out, just as Adonai has spoken. So Joshua blessed him, and he assigned Hebron to Caleb. Therefore, Hebron became the inheritance of Caleb, the son of Jephun the Kizanite, to this day, because he followed Adonai, the God of Israel. To this day. When you go to Israel and you drive through Hebron, every time I said it to the first service, when you drive through Hebron, I think of Caleb. The descendants are still there. His descendants are still there. Why? Because God said, forever. Forever. It was a promise, right? Caleb got his wealth transfer. A delay was not a no. A delay just meant he kept building his faith and building his faith and building his faith. You have to make up your mind when the enemy brings the delay. And there's a lot of negativity going on in the world right now. We don't always understand because we, you know, Lord, open our eyes so we can see. You know, we don't always understand what's happening, even on our jobs, in our neighborhoods. We don't know. But there's a lot of things going on in the atmosphere, right? But we as people of God, cannot allow our mouths to speak negativity. We cannot allow the enemy to take over and cause us to step in fear and, and stop pushing forward in faith, right? Because let me tell you something. It's not just about you, brothers and sisters. It's about your seed. It's about your seed. You hear me? It's about your seed. And God has a promise for you and your seed, your children and your children's children. So what am I telling you? Hold on to the faith. Keep doing what you're doing. Keep trusting in the Lord. Don't lean into your own understandings. Amen? You just Amen. trust in God right now. Amen. And don't allow any delay to, to deter you from walking by faith. Do you receive that today? Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. We're going to take up our morning tithe and offering. Okay. Who's going to come up here? <laughs> if you want to give this way. Hallelujah. Here comes George, and here comes our little girls. They're coming, yeah. Our little Asherettes here. You want to grab that one, Brio? Okay. <laughs> All right. Train them up. Hallelujah. This is my seed. Hallelujah. You're my seed, too. From our spiritual seed. Hallelujah. <laughs> It's no mistake, you two are friends. It's no mistake. God has his hand on you both. Hand on you both to preach the gospel to your generation. You'll be filled with the Holy Ghost and with fire. You're different, you're different, you're different. Both of you are different. Oh, I thank you, Lord. You reveal to them. You reveal to them what they are to do in the earth. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Bless, Lord, the tithers today. Bless everyone who's here. They get wealth transfer. You agree with me? You yes. agree with me? Yes. You agree yes. with me? Yes. They get a new door of increase. Can I hear an amen? amen. amen. Say amen. 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 Say it loud. Amen. 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 Can you say it? Free up. Amen. 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 They get a new door of increase. They get a new door of increase. A new door of increase. Yes. Doesn't matter if there's been a delay. They have an inheritance by God for them and their children and their children's children. This house shall walk in blessing. They shall walk in prosperity. Lord, I thank you. I thank you for every tither. Right now, you rebuke the devourer. Right now, you rebuke his plans. Right now, you rebuke his tactics. Right now, you can't touch. You can't touch this in the name of Yeshua. You can't touch it. You can't touch it. Oh, I praise you, Father, right now for victory. In every person's life. Hallelujah. Amen. In Yeshua's name. Amen. Amen. Okay. Amen. So stand in front like when that part of that song that said, I see the breaking. I see the breaking. I see the breaking. I see the breaking. You've got to see it. You've got to see the breaking. Oh, he's working. He's working. He's working. 
We got to continue in faith. Hallelujah. Don't be moved. Don't be swayed by what the enemy is trying to do. Father, we praise you today. We glorify you today, God. Oh, because you are working all things for our good. And we thank you for your holy presence that's in this room. And Lord, we have we know the gate of heaven. The gate of heaven is Yeshua. The gate of heaven, oh, is our faith in you. That gate, that gate, we go through the gate today. Oh, hallelujah. And we just praise you for everyone who's here today. Thank you, Lord, for... No evil shall befall them, nor shall he plead, come nigh their dwelling today. We give you honor and glory in Yeshua's name. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, the Lord gave me this word for the offering today. It says, a delay does not mean no. A delay does not mean no. God said, wealth transfer and a new door of increase. And he brought me to the Torah portion. I don't know if you guys are watching us on Zoom, um, but Pastor Ken's going to be teaching the Torah portion every Wednesday night. And um, you'll be following along with thousands of people reading the Bible, okay? And um, it, there's unity in it. And I was with my mother-in-law on Monday, and she said to me, Lisa, I want you to know that there's a blessing that comes when you read the Torah portion. There's an, there's an anointing because it's the timing of the Lord. So we're going to talk about the children of Israel spied out the land. Ten saw, the twelve of them, they all saw the wealth of the land. They all had the same promise, okay? God promised them the promised land, amen? But ten of them came back with a negative report, right? But two of them had a different spirit. One of them was Caleb. In Numbers chapter 13, 30, it said Caleb, when all, what happened was all the people were just spewing out negative, saying it can't be done. You know, and you know, that's why when we sing this song, God is working all things for our good. The enemy is going to try to delay your wealth transfer and your blessing and your new door of increase. But you got to just keep hanging on and watch what comes out of your mouth. So the people of Israel were just saying all kinds of negative things. And Caleb interrupted and called for silence before Moses and said, let's go up and take the land now. We can do it. But the rest of the people did not believe. And because of that, the Bible says, and I told you this last week, Everyone who was 20 years old and older never got to see their promised land. They never got their wealth transfer. They never got their new door of increase. Okay, I want you to realize that. They never got it because of their negative tongue. Look what God says about the ones who had faith, though. Caleb, Numbers 14. But my servant Caleb, this is a different story. He has a different spirit. He follows me passionately. I'll bring him into the land that he scouted, and his children will inherit it. So God pronounced for the, those, all the other spies, I don't know if you realize, the ten spies wind up dying, okay, from a plague. But Caleb and Joshua, God said something about Caleb, and he grabbed hold, he grabbed hold of this by faith. He said, he's going to get his inheritance, and his children's going to inherit it also. Remember, I started with delay does not mean no. So the children of Israel, they wander around for 40 years and they go back into the promised land. And Joshua, um, he sends the spies, his two spies. He was smart this time. He said, I'm not going to send 12. I'm only going to send two because the two is going to come back with a good report. Amen. <laughs> he was doing that by faith. And they came back with a good report and it was time for um, they went into the promised land and Caleb, even though there was a delay in the promise, I want you to understand, God told Caleb, you're going to inherit your land and your children, but there was a delay of 40 years. But look what happens, Joshua 14, because Caleb goes back to his mountain. He goes to the very place that he put his foot, that God said, this is your inheritance. And he says to Joshua, I was 40 years old when Moses, the servant of Adonai, sent me from, from to spy out the land. And I brought him back a word as it was in my heart. Nevertheless, my fellows that went up with me made the heart of the people melt with fear. 
but I fully followed Adonai my God. So Moses swore on that day saying, surely the land on which your foot has trod will be an inheritance to you and to your children forever because you have fully followed Adonai my God. So now, behold, Adonai has kept me alive, just as he said, 45 years since the time that Adonai spoke this word to Moses while Israel was journeying in the wilderness. And now, behold, I am 85 years old today, and I am still as strong today as I was in the day that Moses sent me. As my strength was then, so my strength is now for war and for going out and coming in. Now, therefore, give me this hill or mountain country about which Adonai spoke on that day. For you heard on that day how that Anakin's giants were there as well as great fortified cities. Perhaps Adonai will be with me and I will drive them out just as Adonai has spoken. So Joshua blessed him and he assigned Hebron to Caleb as his portion. Therefore Hebron became the inheritance of Caleb's son. Japhanun and Kenizi to this day because he followed Adonai, the Lord God of Israel. What's that passage saying? 45 years. But he says, give me my mountain. God promised me. It, delay is not a no. So don't get discouraged is what I'm trying to tell you. Delay is not a no. There's a lot of things happening in our atmosphere right now. God said, wealth transfer, new door of increase. But it matters what comes out of our mouth. Pastor Ken, I was sharing this with him on the way. I'm like, this is what I'm going to talk about. And he said, Caleb's mouth was circumcised. He had a circumcised mouth. What does that mean? He had a mouth of faith, a mouth of, of righteousness. What year are we in? The year of the mouth. We got to have a mouth that's circumcised with the word of God. So even if there's a delay that comes, don't let negativity come out of your mouth. You hold on in faith and you say, Lord, you promised it. You promised it and you will get it. And you know what I love about this passage is Caleb said, I don't care that I'm 85 years old. I'm still as strong at 85 as I was at 40. I want you to remember that. When God gives you releases the inheritance, you're going to enjoy it. That's what he was trying to tell me. He's like, you think that he didn't enjoy it. Oh, yes, he did enjoy it. He enjoyed it. But not only did he enjoy it. His children enjoyed it and his children's children. And I want you to realize he, God promised it was forever. Amen. Remember that. God said to Caleb, it's forever for your children. So every time we drive through Hebron in Israel, I always think about Caleb and say, you said, God, it was forever. So don't, don't be discouraged with any delay that the enemy tries to put in front of you. Amen? pondering about what to speak about this week and I kept getting a vision if you will every time I thought about what I'm going to speak about I kept seeing a pillar of fire mm. and it's not something I'm, that you know, I'm used to seeing and I'm like okay well I'm going to put it aside because that's kind of like not what I would think to speak about you know I mean that well why are you wanting me to speak about this pillar of fire I mean I don't understand it why every time I start thinking about the the Saturday teaching I see a pillar of fire pillar of fire pillar. so then I finally said let me just study this pillar of fire just to make sure and see if this is what the Lord wants me to speak about and and also during the week Pastor Lisa is telling me about um, different people she's listening to about the fire and I'm like I'm not and I'm like she's talking about Elijah and um, so I'm, I'm not going to be talking about that part because that was not what God was showing me this week but I believe it's very significant word for the season we're in and then I want to pray over every one of you about this pillar of fire at the end of the service because I believe the Lord is trying to get a message to us because I'm a person who sees visions and dreams. That's how God talks to me through visions and dreams. So if I'm praying for somebody and I see something, I, it's like I can't come up with that. So I know if God's showing me something while I'm praying for somebody that he wants, that's what he wants me to pray for that person. Well, in the same way, when I prepare a message, usually something either just comes, you know, just comes on me or comes through me in a dream at night. I wake up in the morning and I say, I just know what I'm going to talk about. Or in this case, I kept seeing this pillar of fire. So I actually 
put one on the paper so you can actually see the pillar of fire that I saw. I saw this pillar of fire. And there's a lot of meanings behind it in the Bible. And we're going to look at some of them today. But in Exodus 14, it says, uh, The angel of God who went before the camp of Israel moved and went behind them. And the pillar of cloud moved from before them and stood behind them. And it came between the camp of Egypt and the camp of of Israel. So here the, there's a pillar of cloud that was in front of Israel and now it came and moved um, behind them. The, the cloud, if you saw, I want you to just think about this, the, the pillar of fire was behind, it wasn't in the front of them at this point, it, right now the pillar of cloud or fire was behind them. And now look what happens when it's behind them. There was a, there was the, okay, it came between the camp of Egypt and the camp of Israel. So when it came behind them, there was a separation, if you will, between Israel and Egypt. What was in between Israel and Egypt? A pillar of fire. So I just want you to start thinking about that. What is God trying to show us? He's showing us that there is a wall of fire, a pillar of fire, if you will, that's going to separate you and I as believers from the darkness, from Egypt. From Egypt is also a type of the world. So there is going to be this pillar of fire that separates you. And then look what it says. There was the cloud in the darkness. It gave light by night. So one part is it gives light. So when you don't know how to see, it's the pillar of fire that gives you the vision or the light to see in the darkness. So we're in darkness right now, but the pillar of fire gives you a light to see in the midst of the darkness. And then the other part I think is so powerful. One did not come near the other all night. So in other words, God protected his people from the Egyptians, the Egyptians could not get near Israel, right. and the Israelites could got not get near Egypt because of this pillar of fire. Now, if you jump down to verse 24 in Exodus 14, it says, In the morning watch, Yahweh looked out on the Egyptian army through the pillar of fire and the, the cloud. He looks through it, through this fiery cloud, if you will, and what does he do? He confused the Egyptian army. And I just love that because God knows how to bring his enemies into confusion. Yes. Yes. We have shalom. They have confusion. We have protection. They get their you know what beat. <laughs> now look at Nehemiah 9. Just to give you a little more understanding. Moreover, in a pillar of cloud, you led them by day and in a pillar by fire by night to give them light in the way which they should go. Perhaps the Lord is telling us as his people today and those watching online and maybe listening in another nation in Brazil or Russia or Malaysia, wherever you are right now. Perhaps the Lord is telling you that his light is going to guide you during this season. You're not going to have to worry about what I should be doing or where I should be going. But this pillar of fire is what gonna, it says is going to give them light in the way they should go. Just put your hand on your heart and say, Lord, Lord. I thank you for the pillar of fire. Thank you. It's giving, it's giving me direction. It's giving me direction. It's giving me light. It's giving me light. It's showing me, it's showing me the way I should go. I should go. In the name of Yeshua. In the name of Yeshua. Amen. You also came down on Mount Sinai. You spoke with them from heaven. You gave them right ordinances, mishpat, which we've been talking about, judgments, true laws. You gave them the Torah, good statutes, commandments. You made them to know your holy Sabbath. You commanded them commandments, statutes, and a law by Moses your servant. And gave them, look at this, from bread from the sky for their hunger. He's telling you, he's telling them, I provided yeah, for you. Yeah. I brought water out of the rock for them for their thirst and commanded them that they should go in and possess that land. Pastor Lisa talked about that, which you had sworn to give them. 
But, everybody look at that. But they and our fathers behaved what? Proudly. Proudly. Prou pride. Remember, God resists the proud. But he gives grace to the humble. They were proud. They hardened their neck. They were stubborn. They didn't listen to the commandments. They refused to obey. They weren't mindful of your wonders they, that you did among them. But they hardened their neck. And in their rebellion, they appointed a captain to return to their bondage. This is literally the, the Torah portion this week. But you are a God ready to pardon. Yes. Hallelujah. Oh, I love that. Gracious and merciful. Slow to anger. And a, his fierce mercy, if someone would, would, was yes. saying. And abundant in loving kindness. And did not forsake them. Yes, they made themselves of old the calf and said, this is your God who brought you out of Egypt. And they committed awful blasphemies. Yet you and your manifold mercies did not forsake them in the wilderness. Hallelujah. But look at this. The pillar of cloud didn't depart from over them by day to lead them in the way. Neither the, did the pillar of fire by night to show them light and the way which they should go. Hallelujah. Perhaps the Lord is, is seeing the state of his people today, even in America, even around the world. We have not done what we're supposed to do. But in the midst of that, God still is merciful. Yes. And he still is showing us, I'm going to give you this pillar of fire to give you a light to protect you. Very interesting today's date. June 6th, uh, excuse me, what is it? June 20th, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. 2020. We are in the sixth month of our calendar. And we can see today... We are in the 20th day of 2020. 6 2020. 20. So really, so there's a three, there's three 2020s. And if you add 20, those three 2020, because we're on the 20th day and we're in the uh, 2020. If you add those 2020s, then you'll get 60. Mm -hmm. 2020. And the 20th day, 60. There's an interesting. There's an interesting, it's an interesting number in the Bible. There's a letter in the Hebrew alphabet that gives us the number 60. It's the it's a letter Semach, and I'll give it to you later on your WhatsApp so you can see it. But Semach actually means to support you, to uphold you, but also it is the what it is the root word from which the Hebrew word shield comes from. Oh. I will shield you. I will protect you. So God, on this, I don't know why I'm preaching about this pillar of fire on, yeah. on this 2020, this six, I these know. 320s, this 60, if you will. Mm -hmm. But the pillar of fire has to do with God's protection. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. It means to support it also means to surround you, to circle you, if you will. The first time this word surround is used in the Bible, it talks about two rivers. It's so interesting. Two rivers that surrounded Eden. One named Pishon, which means increase or overflowing or dispersive. The second is Gihon, which means to burst forth or to break out. Is that not good news yes. to know that when God surrounds us, He surrounds us with increase. He surrounds Hallelujah. us with breakthrough. Praise you, Lord. <clears throat> Look at this in, in Song of Songs. Song of Songs. Song of Solomon. Chapter 3, verse 6. You're going to see this. It's amazing about this number 60 and the and how it, how it has to do with surrounding us, protecting us, upholding us, shielding us. Who is this one descending from the wilderness in the pillar of the glory cloud? It's actually the same cloud. It's yeah. the same cloud. He is fragrant. Look at this. With anointing oils of myrrh and frankincense. More fragrant than all the spices of the merchant. Who was anointed? We know our Lord was anointed yes, with these yes, things. When yes. the wise men came, right? We know that they brought to him gold and frankincense. And myrrh. He, they're saying he's a king. He's anointed. Mm. Look, it is the king's marriage carriage. Mm. The love seat. Look at this. Surrounded by 60 champions. Woo, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
The mightiest of Israel's hosts are like pillars of protection. God says, I am surrounding the king and his bride with my warriors, my champions, and they are what? Pillars of protection. You can't make this up. It's in the scriptures. It's so clear. They are angelic warriors standing ready with swords to defend the king and his fiance from every terror of the night. It's literally the word, his mighty warriors, is his, his valiant ones, his, his Gabor. One of the redemptive names of God is Yahweh Gabor, the mighty God, the God of valor, the God of might, the God of power. And when I was praying this week, I kept seeing, I was like, I kept seeing valor, valor, or my people are valor. My people have courage, my people have strength, my people have power. Yes. I was like, wow, this is amazing. There are 60 valiant warriors who surround and protect the yes. king and his betrothed. Are we not the king's betrothed? Are we not yes. married to the Lord? God says, I've got... Those, I've got people, I've got angels, if you will. I've got a pillar of fire that will protect you at all times. This is not a season for you to be afraid. Mm -mm. Because God's got your front, He's got your back, Amen. He's got your up and down, He's got you all around. He's sur you're surrounded, if you will. Look at Psalms 32. For this, let everyone who is godly pray to you at a time when, when you may be found. Surely when the great waters overflow, they shall not reach to him. You are my hiding place. You will preserve me from trouble. You will surround me with songs of deliverance. I will instruct you and teach you in the way you should go. I'll counsel you with my eye on you. Don't be like the horse or like the mule who have no understanding, who are controlled by bit and bridle or else will not come near to you. We've got to be so sensitive to the Lord and his voice and his word. He doesn't want in this season him for him not to pull you or, or, or like, a, like a put that, you know, if you ever rode a horse, they put a bit in their mouth so you can control the horse where you should go. He said, don't be like that with the Lord. Let him, let him be able to just speak a word and so you can just hear it and say, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, I'll do it. Why? Because you're surrounded. You're, he's you're, he's singing, singing over you songs of what? Deliverance. Hallelujah. Just so happens uh, when we were on our prayer call this week, our Zoom gathering, uh, Brother Paul, he mentioned a scripture that the Lord had been dealing with. It went right along with this sermon. Yes. I said, like, we're going to we're gonna have to speak and look yes. at it. And when you look at it in context, it's going to blow your mind. You can see I'm getting a little excited. I gotta come. No, no, I'm we you, like boy, it. I know. <laughs> Zephaniah 3, verse 16. In that day it will be said to Jerusalem, Don't be afraid, Zion. Hallelujah. It says, Don't let your hands be weak, don't let them hang down. Yahweh your God is among you as a mighty, as a Gibor, one who will what? He's going to save you. He's going to rescue you. He will rejoice over you with joy. He will calm you in his love. Hallelujah. He will rejoice over you with singing. Look at this, verse 18. I will remove those who grieve about the appointed feasts from you. I, I, Paul, I don't know if you even knew what that scripture's in there. I didn't even realize this is in the Bible. Those people who say, you don't need to be doing those feast days. Why are you meeting on Shabbat? That's all old and gone. He says, I'll remove those who grieve you. They are a burden and a reproach to you. Behold, at that time, I will deal with all those who afflict you. I will save those who are lame and gather those who are driven away. I will give them praise and honor whose shame have been in all the earth. Wow. Hallelujah. At that time, I'll bring you in. At that time, I'll gather you. I will give you honor and praise among the peoples of the earth. When I restore your fortunes. Hallelujah. Wealth transfer New York before your eyes says Hallelujah. Yahweh. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And you understand the reason the devil doesn't want us to be in alignment and agreement with the feast of the Lord. These are the times where God's judgment, but also Times of God's blessings and favor. Yes. Look in Psalms 102. I'll show you it. 
Psalms 102, verse 13. You will arise and have mercy in Zion for the time to favor her. Yes, the set time, the moed has come. We're in, every Shabbat is a moed. Every time, every se the seven feast days are moeds. The new moon or the new month, it's a moed. Yeah. For you, your servants, take pleasure in her stones and show favor to her dust. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. We're going to jump down a little bit, and we're going to look now at a story of a king that was supernaturally surrounded and protected. And we're going to look at why was this king protected when some other... Have you ever... Sometimes I'm like, well, why is this one seem to get protection? And why does this one have to go through something? Well, we don't know always the reason, but we can maybe get learned from this scripture. Look at 2 Chronicles 17, 9. They taught in Judah, having the book of the law, the Torah of the Lord with them. They went throughout. Literally, that's the word that means surrounded, as in a circle or a circuit. What did they do? They circled the city, if you will, all the cities, with the word of God, with the Torah of Judah. And they taught the people. So when the so think about it, they went everywhere and they began to in like a circuit or a circle. They began to take God's word and they began to make sure that the people were surrounded, if you will, with the word, with the instructions, with God's ways. And look what happens. Verse 10. Now, the dread of the Lord was on all the kingdoms of the land surrounding Judah. Same word. So that they did not make war against Jehoshaphat because they surrounded Judah with the teaching of the Torah the nations that surrounded them were afraid and would not attack them I believe this is a key for our protection when we start giving everybody in the body of Messiah in the body of Christ if we start teaching them the instructions. We surround them with the word. And the more we're surrounded with the word. The more the fear of God is going to fall on the other nations. And they're going to be afraid of us. They're, the reason that they are not afraid of us. Is we've not been surrounding ourselves yeah. correctly. Yeah. Oh, that's good. That's good. And if you look at this in the scriptures. Every time Israel kept the Torah away. They were blessed. Every time they rejected it. And went, and went astray, they would go through some type of judgment. In order to be protected by the fire of the Lord, you must for yourself see by the Spirit of the Lord. You've got to see like Joshua and Caleb see. You've got to see what God sees. Let the Torah word and the Holy Spirit of fire surround and be like frontlets in your eyes and a sign on your hand. Remember God told Israel, to look at the blue in the fringes or the tzitzit. And I wore them today to give you an illustration. I don't know if you can see. I don't know. It's going to be hard. Um, but uh, hopefully there's four corners. And I have four fringes. They symbolize the commands of God, the word of God. And in the book of Numbers and other places, the Lord told Israel... To remind yourself to look at my word, you need to look at this blue in the center of those fringes. A lot of people don't have the blue in it. I, I purposely made sure that I put the blue cords in this fringes. Why is the blue so important? The blue has to do with looking up at, into heaven. Looking up to hear and see the way God sees heaven on earth. You've got to see the kingdom way. The way of the yes. Lord. So he's, yes. he's like in the middle of your natural. Because it will be natural threads. But in the middle of that. In, your, the, in the middle of your everyday natural life. God says there's a little bit of heaven on earth. When you understand that I'm in the midst of you. That my word is true no matter what's going on. And you look on it and you see it. And he, he had to wear it to remind him. And I was like, you know what? If I had to wear this all the time, or well, maybe I will, I think I would really 
be thinking more and more about why am I wearing this? Why do I have this on? Oh my good, God's commandment. God commandments. I'd watch what I say. I'd watch where I went. Uh, amen. I, I think God has a reason for that, right? Look in Proverbs 29. Where there's no vision or no revelation of God and his word, the people are unrestrained. In other words, there's chaos. There's disorder. There's disruption. Because they don't see the way God wants them to see. But happy and blessed is he who keeps the Torah, who keeps God's law. There's a blessing, Pastor Lisa said, we don't even understand it, that God ties the blessing to our obedience of his word because it's a walk of faith. You can't even do it without faith. Mm -mm. And if you do it without faith, you're in big trouble. Mm -hmm. and I guarantee you won't keep doing it. <laughs> now, look in 2 Kings. Let's look at another story about this pillar and this fire. One of his servants said, this is Elisha. And he was causing a lot of trouble because he knew what was going on in the king's bedroom. Mm -hmm. And the king didn't like that. Mm -hmm. And the king sent people for Elijah, Elisha. And every time they went to Elisha, Elisha would somehow just be somewhere else. <laughs> so one of his servants said none of us is helping him my lord O king but Elisha the prophet who is in Israel tells the king of Israel the words that you speak in your bedroom so he said go and see where he is so that I might send men and seize him and he was told he's in Dothan and he sent horses and chariots and a powerful army there they came by night and they surrounded the city the servant of the man of God got up early and went and behold there was an army with horses and, and chariots encircling the city. Elisha's servant said to him, oh my master what are we to do? We're surrounded. Elisha answered, don't be afraid for those who are with us are more than those are with them. Then Elisha prayed and said Lord please open his eyes. Open his eyes to the word. Open his eyes to what the spirit is saying. Open his eyes to to God right now and, and, and Lord please open his eyes that he may what he makes he saw but he didn't see into the spirit realm you understand he saw only with these eyes we can't today just look with these eyes these eyes will deceive you yeah. Yeah. you'll think oh my goodness we're defeated oh my goodness we just throw in the towel just quit mm -mm. it looked like that with these eyes but Elisha said he's got to see with a new set of eyes. Hallelujah. You've got to put your Holy Spirit glasses on, somebody. Hallelujah. Put your Holy Spirit glasses on. You're going to get 20, 20, 20 vision. You're going to get the 60 vision. You're going to see that God's got a pillar of fire. He's surrounding you, but you can't see it with the other vision. Hallelujah. Look what he says. And the Lord opened the servant's eyes and he saw. And behold, the mountain was full of horses and chariots of fire. You see this fire surrounding Elisha. We sing this song, Michael W. Smith. It might look like I'm surrounded. I'm surrounded by you. Right. You're circled. Samach. Yeah. You're, you're upheld, you're shielded, you're protected. It might look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by... We're not afraid. Amen. Amen. It might look, it might look Seattle. It might look Minneapolis. It might look L.A. It might look New York. It might, might look U.S. It might look Israel. It doesn't matter. God's mercies are new every morning. Great is His faithfulness. His Samach is going to uphold us. And this June, the sixth month of 2020. Crazy. In June, the 20th day, 2020, 60. A pillar of fire to protect us. I don't know what God is showing me, but I believe he's saying, I'm going to protect my people yes. in this season yes. supernaturally. I'm going to surround them and there's going to be more oh, with yeah. us than there are yeah. with them yeah. because it's a great angelic army. It. So I give my angels and they'll encamp around you. Zechariah says, 
verse two, chapter two, verse four, five. And he and he said to the second angel, "Run, speak to that young man, saying, Jerusalem will be inhabited like villages without walls, spreading out into the open country." Because he's basically saying there's going to be an expansion of Jerusalem. It's going to be expansion of the city of peace because of the great number of people and livestock in it. For I declare, as the Lord will be a wall of fire around her, protecting her from her enemies. I will be the glory in her midst. Look in Psalms 97, uh, verse 2. It says, clouds and darkness surround him. Righteousness and justice are the foundation of his throne. A fire goes before him and burns up his enemies round about. Psalms 125 says, as a mountain surrounds Jerusalem, so Yahweh surrounds his people from this time for, forward and forevermore. The only time... You have to worry about evil. It's the same way Israel had to worry about evil when they refused to obey what God said. That's right. That's right. When they did what God said, He always surrounded them with a pillar of fire, a wall of fire, with His angelic host. So look in Ezekiel. The Lord says, This is Jerusalem. I've set her in the middle of nations. And countries are around her. If you study this out, you will see. And you go to Israel, you'll see that Israel is actually, the, or Jerusalem is actually the center of the earth. Mm -hmm. you, you can't make that up. God put it, they show you in the map how the countries all intersect in Israel, Jerusalem. The continent, the, the, whole, the, the whole way the world was made where Jerusalem is the center. This is believe you understand the Garden of Eden is in Jerusalem. Mm. Okay. The Lord says, This is Jerusalem. I've set her in the middle of nations and countries around her. She has rebelled, but verse 6, she has rebelled against my ordinances and doing wickedness more than the nations. Oh my God, my people. And against my statutes more than countries that are around her. For they have rejected my ordinances. And as for my statutes, they have not walked in them. Therefore, the, the Lord Yahweh says, because you are more turbulent than the nations that are around you. And have not walked in my ways, neither have kept, neither have kept my ordinances, neither have followed the ordinances of the nations that are around Excuse me. Excuse me neither have Follow the ordinances of the nations that are around you. Therefore, the Lord Yahweh says, Behold, I am, I even am against you. I will execute judgments among you in the sight of the nations. I will do in you that which I have not done and which I will not do anything like it anymore because of what? All your abominations. And if you study the book of Revelation. This is one of the key things that's going to be happening. It's going to be a judgment upon Jerusalem for rejecting God's ways. Because Jerusalem was to be a light to the other nations. But instead, he said they were worse. In the midst of that, there will be many that repent. You'll see that even in Revelation. You'll see the hand of mercy. You'll see. But this is why there's going to be judgment. It's only because they refuse to do what God said. There's a story where God tells Moses, I want you to take the 70 elders and I want those 70 elders to to surround the tabernacle. Just think about that. I want you to put 70 of the leaders, of the elders, and I want them to surround the tabernacle. And something's going to happen significant to these 70, and it's going to be, if you will, a proto-prophecy, or a, a it's going to point to the book of Acts, if you will. It's going to point to the Gospels. Because if you remember, you understand, Jesus had a 70. We know that, right? Isn't it funny? Remember, God said, one's going to come like Moses. He's going to be a lawgiver. He's going to be a deliverer. What did Moses have? He has a 70. What does Jesus have? He has a 70. Jesus had a 12. Moses had 12 tribes. Do you understand? You see that the, you, it's... Mm -hmm. The Bible seamless. <laughs> and
And so what's going to happen, we're going to read in Numbers chapter 11, verse 24. Moses went out and told the people Yahweh's words, and they gathered 70 men of the elders of the people, and they set them around the tent. There's something significant about leadership, if you will, being close to the tabernacle, understanding the blessing of the tabernacle, understanding the house of God. There's something significant in that. They were in a way, there's a, there's a guarding, if you will, when God's appointed leaders are around, where God's in the center. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Look in Numbers 11. Moses went out and told the people Yahweh's words. And he gathered 70 men of the elders of the people. And he set them around the tent. And Yahweh came down in the cloud. And he spoke to them. And took of the spirit that was on him. And he what? Put it on the 70 elders. So the same spirit that's on Moses, if you will. This prophetic spirit. This declaration spirit of the word of the Lord. Come, came on the 70. They got the same spirit. The spirit rested on them. And they what? Prophesied. But they did so no more. Something else very interesting. But two men. Remained in the camp. The name of the one was Eldad. And the other was Medad. And the spirit rested on them. And we don't know why. But for some reason, these two got out of position. They weren't around the tabernacle, but they're still one of those named 70. And they're the elders. And though even though they're not around the tabernacle, the same prophetic spirit comes on them. Except now they're in the camp. You've got people all around the tabernacle, the elder. But then you've got people in the camp. And we don't never tells you why. I want to know why. Maybe they got a call. I don't know. They got a text. Maybe I don't know. Come and help. <laughs> I don't know. Two men remained in the camp, Eldad and Medad. And the spirit rested on them too. They were those who were written, but they had not gone out to the tent. And they prophesied in the camp. So now they're prophesying in the camp. And there, there's prophecies. There's two. There's prophecy going on two places, if you will. It's going on in the tabernacle and it's in the camp. Oh, hallelujah. hallelujah! Hallelujah! Wouldn't it be awesome if not only are we yes. prophesying yes. in the church, yes. but we're or, or, or where the presence of God is, but we're also out outside wherever the camp yeah. is, wherever we are. We're, we're declaring the word of God. We have that prophetic spirit in the marketplace, yes. in the schools, oh, in your where in your business. I think we need it even more than around the tabernacle sometimes. Now this guy, young man, it's amazing how it says a young man ran. And it shows his age. He's younger. He's not, he's not, it says at the beginning, he says this is at the beginning of the journey. Young man ran and told Moses, said, ill dad, and me dad, they're prophesying in the camp. Joshua, the son of man, the servant, now it shows you who it is. It's Joshua. <laughs> The servant of Moses, one of his chosen men, answered, My Lord, Moses, forbid them. This is where the strongest words in the scriptures, it's not just for, forbid them. It's you got to put them in prison, basically. Get them out of there. Prison them. Restrain them. I'm telling you, this is a strong word in the Hebrew. Prison them. Get them. Shut them up. Moses said to him, this is prophetic. you got to understand, are you jealous for my sake? I wish, look at this, that all Yahweh's people were prophets and that Yahweh would put his spirit on them. Now I'm not going to take the time because I can, I can give you some understandings 
But what they were prophesying was prophesying into the future. They had seen in the spirit that one day Moses was not going to enter the promised land. And there was going to be a new leader. And they, and they were telling him Joshua is going to be the man. And Joshua heard it's like, I'm not ready to do this. It's 40 years before. And in a sense, Joshua's protecting Moses. Moses, they're, they're not, it's kind of like, Moses, look what they're saying about you. Mm-hmm. I got to protect my leader. So all these things are in play. But it was a proto-prophecy. It's pointing to the future when God would put his spirit on all yes. flesh. According to the book of Joel, the book of Acts, we're going to read it. Mm. Both the same scripture. Look in Joel 2, it's also Acts 2. Also on the servants and the handmaidens in those days, I will what? Pour out my spirit. This is what blew my mind because I, I couldn't figure it out. Remember, God shows me this pillar of smoke and fire and I'm like, why am I preaching this? Why am I thinking about this? I never thought in my mind. Every time I close my eyes, I see this pillar of fire, this pillar of fire. I didn't even know it's in the book of Acts about the pillar of fire. Mm. And it has to do with the last days. Look at it says. Mm-hmm. The servants and the handmaids, I'll pour out my spirit, I'll show wonders in the heavens and in the earth, blood, fire, and pillars of smoke. What's going to happen in these last days? Mm. Wonders in the heaven and the earth, blood, fire, pillars of smoke. We're going to see again these pillars of protection, if you will. The sun be turned into darkness, the moon into blood, before the great and terrible day of Yahweh comes. It will happen that whoever calls on Yahweh's name will be saved. For in Mount Zion in Jerusalem, there will be those who escape, as Yahweh has said, among the remnant, those whom Yahweh calls. Mm. Mm. Hallelujah. So when you study those two guys, Eldad and Medad, mm. and if you look it up in Blue Letter Bible or Strong's Concordance, you will actually see the name next to it, Theophilus. Mm. Because Theophilus means beloved of God or one who God's love, but El- Eldad and Medad mean the same thing. So they're, you understand, they're prophesying out of love. Eldad means El has love or God loves and Medad means love. It's a double love, if you will. It's a greater love, if you will. And that's how you preach in these days with the love of God that never fails. That's how we prophesy. We know it's true because it says when you prophesy, you prophesy to encourage, to lift up. You know that's the wrong spirit when people are prophesying to destroy and harm people and using the word to curse people. Why? Because the pillar of fire is there to protect God's people. You can look up that word Theophilus in Acts and Luke and you can find out that that those books were actually written to the, it, it is a person, but it's also prophetic. It's written to those whom what? God loves. The word is a love letter. God's written it. Hallelujah. He gives it to us because he loves us. Yeah. Yeshua has 70, right? Luke chapter 10, he sends them out in pairs. Me, dad, and, and El, dad. Me, had and El, dad, they're in the pairs. I, it just so happens they're in a pair. They're, they're in the camp. They get the prophetic spirit. When Jesus sends people out, what does he do? He gives them his spirit. You can't be sent. You understand? You can't be sent without the anointing. You can't be sent without the prophetic spirit of the Lord. God sends you with his power, with his authority, mm-hmm. and with his pillar of fire, his protection. Say, prove it, Pastor. I'm going to. Look at Luke chapter 10. Behold, he sent the two. This is Luke chapter 10. It starts off Luke chapter 10. He sent, he sent, he appointed 70. He appointed 70. 
And he gave them instructions. Don't worry, I got you. I got your back. I got your front. I'll, I'll provide for you. If they don't receive you, don't worry about it. There's somebody who will. Now look. Behold, I give you authority. Look. To trample on serpents and scorpions. It's not literal, if you understand. He's not talking about the scorpion that runs along the... The scorpion and the, and the snake, or the serpents and the snake, has to do with the demonic powers of deception, the sorcery of the devil, the prognosticating, the false prophecies, if you will, of the demonic. I gave you authority over the heat, the one who's trying to get you to live like a serpent on your belly, mm. rather than look up and see the blue in heaven. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Over all the power of the enemy. Look what it says. Look what it says. And nothing. Everybody say nothing. Nothing, nothing shall by any means hurt you. I'm telling you. God's giving you this pillar of fire. To let you know. Nothing shall by any means hurt you. It's Hallelujah. not going to work. It's not going to work. Hallelujah. Let me give you this last one. Psalms 5. For let all those who take refuge in you rejoice. Hallelujah. Let them always shout for joy because. Wait a minute. Hold on. You Be Hallelujah. Because. Pastor Ken, I just want to get in the ring. You don't need to get in the ring. Right. Rocky. Yeah. <laughs> Why? We don't get in the ring. Because he gets in the ring. The wall of fire gets in between us and the enemy. Because you defend them. Just like he defended Israel. They didn't have to fight. He brought confusion to the Egyptian army. They just walked on, walked on over. Crossed over. Hebrews cross over. Let them also who look, who love your name be joyful in you. For you will what? Bless the righteous Yahweh, you will surround him with favor as a shield. 